stream back up. Oh, uh, I think there's one more thing I gotta do. There we go. Oh, uh, and I want to show you uh, a little bit what we're going to touch on today. Uh, we're going to be continuing with long poses today. There will be, I will be trying to have us do, instead of copies from like master drawings and stuff, try to use photos. Uh, for this warm-up set, we're going to be doing a bunch of martial artists and Bruce Lee to warm up, but we'll be doing a bunch of longer male model photos that I found before class that I've been seeing we find early on. Uh, let's see here. Hello. Hey. What are you working on today? Uh, long poses, and I'm also going to talk, talk a little bit about um, rotating figures. Uh, feel free to start drawing right now with what's on sc what, what's on screen. Uh, I've got to fiddle with a couple things. Okay, Google set timer for 22 minutes, 30 seconds. 22 yeah. minutes, and we're starting now. Okay, Google raise volume to seven. Okay, goody. All right, let's see here. There was a few things I did yesterday. I'm kind of experimenting a little bit more with using. Um, animation as a tool for studying anatomy more because it's some because like the whole reason why i'm doing all this in the first place is because uh, i'm trying to improve my animation skills let's see there's a few of these that i did one of them was an aborted one that i'm going to close but i did these yesterday in clip studio uh, yeah there's the abort Yeah, this guy I actually did not originally intend to be a animated figure turnaround, so that there's like weird shit happening with his chest growing and shrinking and his shoulders going up and down. And his feet placement are kind of funky and all over the place. There's also some weird shit with his arms and stuff, and a few things to, to adjust in his pelvis too, but it works surprisingly well considering that. Uh, I might want to do another version of a full figure like that. But uh, this guy right here is... Pretty close to the model that we're going to be. I'm going to be trying to have people use tonight for our long poses. This guy right here. So here is a uh, quick rough turnaround of my OC Space Dad, and I think I definitely want to do some animation with him very soon. Let's try to think of what. So I'm pretty comfortable with drawing him, I think, at this point. And this is with that, that goblin character that I'm still developing, uh, Stab. I haven't nailed down his design yet, but this, is, this was a fun little exercise. And then, of course, there was, let's see. Oops, what's going on here? Why is that there? Why is that saved as that? That is not right. That's supposed to be my class demos. Why is that save as that? Okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, feel free to get started on the poses. I'm going to show a couple of things. Let's see if I can find the head turn I did. Let's see. There was a... There it is. So this, I think, is the most successful one I did yesterday. This shows all the practice, the relentless practice with the Loomis head is paying off. Uh, I want, want to try it from different angles and like up tilts and down tilts and stuff too if I can. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Maybe keep this the head rotation handy. I'm not really going to do like a demo of it, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I have not officially, I'm not officially assigning a homework piece of a turnaround, but I want to kind of point people in the direction of it. So I'm going to jump in on the warm-ups now.
So these are warm-ups, so um, you can do whatever you want with them just to loosen up. But let's see, I've got a few things in mind I'm going to try for. I'll try to talk through some of what I have in mind for tonight's class. But it's going to be long poses. We're going to go from this to a set of fives, I think. Or another set of two. Yeah, probably a set of fives. So I want us to really slow down and think about what we're drawing. But use this to kind of loosen up right now. So if we need set. We'll do fives, maybe two sets of fives. Or one or two sets of fives. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. But I do want us to like doing at least two 20 minute poses today where we like spend a whole good 20 minutes really paying attention to the figure. So I got a few like figure model things that I'm going to be kind of roughing in here and there on my margins. So you'll see me doing quite a bit of that tonight as I warm up. I've been watching the uh, first couple episodes of the six-part documentary from amazing documentary filmmaker Adam Curtis. He's done a lot of documentaries about well, histories and currents of thought in the modern world and stuff over the years. Really interesting dude. Um, And his uh, current documentary, there's a lot of things I, that I learned about that I didn't really know. Like, um, did you know that the conspiracy theory of the Illuminati started as a prank? Like, literally, like a guy made a guy and his buddies made it up and propagated it to try to like expose how ridiculous conspiracy theories are. And uh, people, it, it got muddled up in like. A mix of like actual like bad stuff that uh that came out later that the government was covering up and stuff like you know like the the various things the various like programs like cointel pro and stuff that came out like in the 70s uh when that stuff dropped like uh, suddenly like something as ridiculous as a varying group from the from hundreds of years ago mysteriously controlling the world seemed plausible to some like some people are dumb I mean, but it just goes to show just like how paranoid and paranoid and suspicious and overly simplistic people are wait people. but uh how how long ago was this was, uh, the well they, they started the, they, they started them rumors about the illuminati like in the 60s or something and they, they started it originally like in playboy magazine no kidding i thought it was a lot older than that no well the stuff that's older isn't isn't the same thing the stuff that's older is a um is mostly just like the church that like uh the, the, the Illuminati was basically like an enlightenment group who wanted to like have their own kind of secular uh secular view of the world and stuff so that like even before even before that they they made up the conspiracy theories about the Illuminati controlling secretly controlling the world there was like um there was already like a lot of paranoia and suspicion and bullshit uh, about them, but they weren't really a focus of anything until like 
until the Discordians, that's the name of the group that made this prank. It was a prank and a thought experiment that kind of evolved into something else. It kind of reminds me, there's a guy I met who um, used to make, who used to make crop circles, like with his buddies and stuff. And he's responsible for like most of the crop circles in the eight, you know, like the 80s and 90s. And, uh, and all, part of the 2000s, like almost, uh, almost all the major like crop circles are him and his buddies. And more, what's funny is like after they started doing them, more of them started popping up. <laughs> because there were other people imitating it, basically. Interesting. It's also, it reminds me of the, you remember the monoliths that started appearing like half a year ago or something? Yeah. And people were big by it, but it was like quickly revealed to be just another prank. Or well, of course crap. it is. I mean, of course it is. Yeah, I mean, of course, but people are so desperate to like latch onto anything that's extraordinary. That something... yeah. yeah. Well, the truth is, is that the world is way more fucking compli complicated, complicated and nasty, and and like like it's the world. The way the world actually works is like way more fucking crazy than any crackpot theory you can come up with. Like. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even talking about like conspiracy theories or shit. I'm just talking about literally like the systems that that like the systems that we have in place in the world. The the fact is, no one is really in complete control of them. Like they're like they are like stuff like the markets and stuff are just like completely out of out of the control of everyone. And but like conspiracy theories become like an easy way to like offload blame and stuff or oh well, there's obviously someone in control because even like e like even like um because like if you can like offload blame on why things are shit onto a group that a shadowy group that you can't really prove exists then that's like a that's like a way for you to exercise control over your life because then like oh they're in control that means someone is in control you see it, it's uh it's like a pass it's like ironically a pacifying thing but it's also like hugely destructive because like people get just super paranoid and then they start like persecuting other people or they start like like doing like really drastic insane stuff based on these these rumors yo space do you have that anime anime reference on the screen because i don't see it what's up I don't see the anatomy reference. Anatomy? Re what do you mean? Like the figure that I just drew? Yeah. Oh no. Well, because I've, I've got another. I've got another set of references that I'm also kind of warming up my figure model on. They are nude, so I can't show them on screen. Oh. And so the reason I thought uh, the Illuminati conspiracy theory was older was because I always thought it was an extension of the paranoia involving Freemasonry, which yeah. is very popular. Yeah, well, yeah, it is kind of. <laughs> and, and it's the same story with the Freemasons. Like, there's this... The Freemasons aren't really that... aren't really a very innocuous group at all. Uh, there's nothing really... Um, I mean, there's, no, there's not, the, the idea that they are, that they would be in a shadow cabal control in the world is just freaking hilarious. Like, they wrote a, like, a, they had a, we had a bunch of Freemasons that were pretty open about what kind of control they wanted to exert on the world when they wrote the fucking Constitution, you dipshits. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, exactly. They were, yeah, they, they wrote entire, they wrote, like, entire pamphlets and stuff on, like, federal, federal republic law and stuff. If you want to know how they want to how they want to control the world, maybe fucking read the Bill of Rights. They weren't maybe maybe read the Bill dollars. of Rights or something, or the uh, or the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> you dumbass, basically. I mean, the people are always looking for like some kind of simple way to offload blame for how fucked and awful the world is, and uh, the truth is, there's not really. And there is a lot we can do to fix things, but 
there's not any easy answers and people are always looking for easy answers and that's not the way the world works like you can't offload everything onto like one shadowy group And so there is like the um some of those conspiracy theories are like even when they involve like stupid shit like aliens and stuff they are often like way more like simplistic than how fucking stupendously complex the world actually works like these, these fucking things are pacifiers Pacifiers for morons and dolts, basically. And to, um, and to, like, stoke and, uh, both soothe and stoke paranoia, basically. There's always an enemy from the outside, and there's always an enemy from the inside. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah, Adam Curtis is really fucking, really fucking great. Um, he's done a lot of really great documentaries over the years. Yeah, I learned, I'm learning a lot of stuff I didn't know from this documentary. I need to check check him out. I yeah. only saw him on on Chapo when I used to listen. Oh yeah, he, he was, he was just he was just a, that's actually why I started watch, watch the documentary. He came he was on an episode uh recently. Talking yeah, talking about the documentary back in 2018 and I saw him actually yeah, I saw his an episode I think that aired right after the 2016 election. If mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, and I thought it was pretty cool, but I didn't uh, look into his stuff after that. Yeah, there's a lot of really good documentaries he's made over the years. I mean, uh, the, a recurring theme in his documentaries is that there's a lot of people that try to pretend they know how they can control the world, but they really can't, and they wind up every everything winds up falling apart for them, basically, and that's pretty much the story of modern human history, to be honest. Like, even the people who want to, who, like, want to, like, be the shadowy puppet organization that can control the world, they, they're not fucking gonna be able to. Don't even, don't even, no. the, the, the amount of hubris to believe that you could actually do that is just, is just, Staggering, staggering to really wrap your head around like if you really take in a, like just how fucking complex the whole world is how complex and contradictory and, and uh the world and people are for that matter And people are always looking for simple answers like, oh, uh, um, ideology is the problem, so we can't have any ideology. Well, you do that, you just you just invented another kind of ideology. Um, uh, uh, not having ideology is the problem, so we got to adopt an ideology. Uh, what's the ideology? Oh, the ideology we have just just restores the old systems of power. <laughs> it's, it, and the cycle goes on and on. Yeah, it's uh, kind of similar to how people uh, oversimplify also personal problems. And the yeah. way to fix someone's life is just stopping one particular habit or changing one particular thing, adopting a certain diet or routine. It's I, always like one thing. I think it's like uh, the world is too complex to be really 
boil down to one particular thing. Like, there's times when collective action is needed. There's times when the individual is, uh, when the individual, um, is sacrosanct. I mean, there's, there's no fucking easy, <laughs> that's the sad, scary part that no one really wants to face up to. There's no easy answers. Uh, to any of the problems that the world has. It's, that's fucking terrifying to face up to. But I think people that do face up to it are better for it. Uh, I, 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 if it doesn't turn them into, like, pessimists and, and so on. Because I think that positive action is still possible. It's just the world, and you could, you shouldn't be stopped just because. Um, uh, I think uh, like extreme pessimism is just on the other side. It, yeah, it, well, point. it's 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 the same kind of mode of thinking, trying to think of the world in, in really overly simplistic terms. Yeah, things don't go the way you want, or you want because the world is that complex that things well, will not always go the way you want. Exactly. It's still trying to get rid of that like fundamental anxiety of not knowing how things will turn out by just assuming the worst will always happen. Right. It's the same thing, really. It's just uh, another way of dealing with it. Yeah, it's paralysis. Self-induced paralysis. I mean, we tr I mean the, the Generation X tried the whole apathy thing, and that didn't work out too well, so, like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't overinvest into ideology or to some kind of simple thing that's going to fix the world, but you also should not be a fucking cynic. You kind of have to be flexible, basically. Because the world is way too complicated to, um... Uh, to really tie down to one thing or another. Okay, Google, stop. Technically done on this set. Keep drawing Mr. Lee here. If you like. So yeah, a lot of what we're going to be doing today will be, of course, you know, more long poses, but I want to point people, I'm not necessarily going to do a demo of it tonight, but I want to point people in the direction of starting to think in terms of turnarounds. Repose it on him here. Uh, I've got another folder that we're going to be using for, uh, actually, for... Our fives, our male figures next here. It's got 58 images in here. A lot of them are the, of uh, the same dude. 
I found. I'm trying to find more sets like this, the, this like for example, this guy, that have like a, a lot of photos of the same model, because then you can get like you can get a better. It, it, like it's a little bit more helpful to kind of read how the body works if you see a lot of different poses of the same model in similar lighting conditions, moved in different positions, and so on. So I'm gonna the be poses aren't on the Discord. Yeah. No. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I need to use the webcam for the Discord. So I'll do that. Okay. Start virtual camera. Turn off the stream, uh, the Discord stream, and turn on the camera in Discord. All right, there we go. Webcam. Now you can see it. Anyway, sorry for that little thing. <laughs> ideology, not ideology. I mean... The world's fucking complex, my dudes. Uh, just try not to be a dick to people, I would say. So I want to steer people in the direction of paying closer attention to Proko's channel uh, further outside of class at home studying. Um, I'm not going to play any of his videos on stream now, but um, I want people to, at whatever level they are at right now, to start watching the Pro Proko's videos. I recommend a lot of rhythm and gesture videos and uh, and some structure videos. But I want people to continuously just start digging into and copying the po copying the poses that Proko has or the, the drawings that Proko makes. Start trying to t invent based on the same structures and stuff. A lot of what he's what he teaches in those videos is very similar to what we're going to be utilizing tonight. I believe the Bose timer is not going. What's up? I believe the Bose uh, timer is not uh, playing. Yeah, it's not because we're on break right now. Alright. Uh, in fact, three more minutes. Uh, four more minutes, actually. Okay, Google, set timer for four minutes. Four minutes, and we're starting now. Yeah, I forgot to start the break timer. So, yeah, uh, like I was saying, uh, Check out Proko's channel. I'll talk like little bits and pieces about what he teaches, but um, I would like people to take it on, take initiative themselves to study their on their own on uh, stuff that he covers. Like this should be where you come to do your gym, art gym workout, uh, Proko is where you go to like understand how you're supposed to work out, you know, and maybe get some like side training in. So I'm doing a lot of little warm-up mini mini comp drills because I'm going to be talking about some of these forms when we get to them later. 
How long should studies be? Uh, as long as you're, as long as you can do them without burning yourself out. Whatever time you can put in, honestly, like it can be. If it's just 15 minutes a day. Okay, that's better than nothing. But should ideally aim for around three or four hours a day, I would say. But more if you're able. Also, uh, I'm going to try to hold out my chip jar today because I'm trying to get some funds together so that I can get one or two additional monitors. I've got one I've got my eyes on is a 1440p monitor and the other one's just a 1080p add more, works, add more workspace display. Um, last time I did this class, I was using the monitors vertically, which was really kind of nice. Um, I sort of figured out a way to work now after doing that, that kind of gets me similar results. Without having to turn it into portrait mode, but portrait mode was really nice, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep, like, using that more in the future for sure. Hmm. I'm tempted to kind of maybe use it tonight, too, but I'm not sure. We'll do it like the- we'll do it like this format tonight. Let's see how it goes. Okay, Google, stop. Uh, so we'll do the- we'll do a set of fives now. Uh, actually, give me- give me one minute here. I gotta get the rest of real fast. Alrighty. Yeah. So what I got in mind is I'm going to have a 1440p display directly in front of me. Uh, and there will be two vertical 1080p monitors on either side that I can display reference and like, monitor chat feed on or whatever. And then my Cintiq, which I can, uh, I'm going to put in a spot where I can reposition it however I need. Uh, using the Ergotron arm that I have it mounted on. So it's going to look something like this. But I'll show you real quick before we get onto the set. 
So like here's the 1440p display, and here's the two vertical 1080p displays. And then there's going to be like my Cintiq down here that is mounted on an Ergotron arm so then I can push it over to the side when I'm not using it or I can turn it or I can uh, turn it vertically. Use like a do like use like a figured model display thing and then I can have like all my multitasking stuff and this one's 1440p display. So I can have like art reference and uh, other stuff on there. Should be kind of a neat setup. So anyway, yeah, if you want to help me make this a reality, because it's going to make running my classes one hell of a lot easier and also improve my art workflow, because I'm going to be having, I'm, I'm really getting turned on to the idea of having, of just surrounding yourself with reference and doing some, doing like a surround scene of like having like anatomy reference here, and like a art rep, inspiring art reference here real world figure reference and stuff here just having a huge amount of surface area to put all my stuff up to look up at when i'm drawing would be really fucking rad so yeah if you want to help me make this a reality please donate to the stream please. anyway so we're going to get started on a set of fives All right, so okay, Google set timer for twenty minutes thirty seconds. Twenty minutes and thirty seconds, starting now. All right, so here's this dude. These are going to be kind of like slower, quick sketches. So I want people to kind of slow down and pay attention to what they're doing. Try to build you. Try to build the figure using simple gesture lines like this to kind of establish the overall gesture of the figure or the overall line of action kind of right here use simple lines to just to establish the shoulder and hip tilt for example also these are just five minute poses so they're not they're inherently not going to be like proportionally accurate but you should try to get them reasonable so remember our anatomical landmarks. I'm marking like about where the top, where the uh, bony parts of the tops of the shoulders are, right here, and the pit of the neck about here. So that helps me establish the front center line there. We've got these lines right here that are going up to the corners of the shoulders there to the pit of the crotch. So you get this kind of kite thing going on here. Um, so a rhythm that I've started using lately for the clavicle is like, say like you got like the pit of the neck here. You got the two shoulders, shoulder points right there. The rhythm I started using is where I kind of curve it like this against the chest and then do that. And that's like what I, the rhythm I used for the clavicle. Basically. So we're, we're paying attention mainly to rhythm, but we're also going to infuse a little bit of structure there. Like just uh, when you're doing the limbs, just do like these really simple parallel lines like that. The shoulders can be handled as like kind of balls, like right there. So I'm going to kind of sweep this down in the direction that the foot is pointed a little bit right there. This back foot back here. Not as concerned with it because I've been concentrating mainly on the torso, but try to get some more of it in here a bit.
So it's going away from us. Let's see here, there's the bottom of the foot there. So you think about three dimensions when you're making your gesture. So that even though it doesn't really have the three dimensions built into it, there's enough breathing room there for you to add the three dimensions. So, there we go. I now know where the knee is and what direction the knee is facing, for example. Uh, now I can now I know what the ankle, what direction the ankle is right there, for example. Let's change this. You keep the lines pretty simple so you can modify and change them, adjust them. There we go, got an egg shape for the rib cage. I could use like another kind of oblong egg shape for the pelvis if I wanted. So you got that opening at the bottom of the rib cage there. Get a little bit of the brown plane in there. This is just a quick sketch, and uh, <laughs> there's just a lot of problems with it. <laughs> but like this leg is kind of really jacked up here. But a lot of this is just like it's about like test driving in rapid succession the simple rhythms that you're going to be using for long poses. Simple rhythms and some of the structures. Alright, so let's find one that has more of a display of the waist. This one's pretty good. Depending on how we pace things out, we might do another set of fives, or we'll just go into doing the tens. In any case, the name of the game lately is going to be longer poses, but we all we will still continually use quick poses to warm up, so we keep that fire going. So I'm going like a, a lot sooner into structure than I normally would or like a long pose in this, because this is a quick sketch. We're allowed to do that for quick sketch. For our, for like more serious long pose, like even our tens are, our tens are essentially going to be like 10 minute quick sketches, uh, 10 minute quick sketches that are pseudo studies of the long poses. 20 minutes is when we really want to start kind of thinking in terms of structuring things more thought out. But quick, the function of quick sketch, well, first off, it's to, like, play with dynamic energy. That's one big thing, uh, one big benefit is quick sketch. The other is you're essentially doing in rapid fire, um, rapid fire mode, a quick version of what you do for long, longer poses or when you're trying to work out drawing problems or something longer. So you get exposed to more quickly basically. So it's essential to do a mix of long and short, longer and shorter poses for your development. And longer poses is something we've been leaving out and it's kind of been to our detriment to an extent. So now we're kind of leaning more into longer poses and shying away from quick sketch a little bit. But I hope that we are able to find the right balance. Much like this guy. This guy's kind of kicking, he's not really balanced. For example, like, inherently there's going to be like some stiffening up that happening happens when you're concentrating more on that stuff. Like, this isn't as dynamic as I would do like a pure, a pure gesture. But that's because I'm, I'm wrestling with a lot of information here and trying to see how I can vibe with it to make it dynamic. When you get fluent with it, 
you'll be able to invest more dynamic energy into it, into stuff like this. And I know that because I've seen lots of people who have walked that path, and then I know that I know that it, it's possible. But I gotta struggle like hell to get there. Same as the rest of you. Simple shapes, not trying to get too descriptive for the thing. So the difference between gesture and shape, I'm doing I'm doing all this very badly right now, is like, oh here's a gesture, for example. Like this, uh, this might be like a leg. Uh, then you like you use shapes like this, add structure to it. Like you think you try to think three dimensionally when you're putting the gesture down. So it gives you kind of an abstract breathing space to construct the three D shapes in. Like I'm adding these, I added these ovoid shapes. Uh, they don't really fully describe how the form is wrapping until I like add a kind of overlaps, like this, for example, or until I add like you can see more stuff like me adding like endpoints to where this ends, ankle down here, facing down from us. Kind of this bulge on either side of the shape of the thigh muscle. But that's how you do it. You start with something, like your gesture is... Your gesture or your rhythm is essentially just like really, really simple parallel lines or something that's helping you place the stuff. And oftentimes you want like a uh, like you want to push beyond what you're seeing a bit for your gesture because otherwise you will stiffen up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna skip this pose because there's uh, there's a couple other things I kind of need to fiddle with. I gotta fiddle with the mannequin that we're gonna be using a little bit more tonight for the longer poses. use these simple rhythms structures so that they can be adjusted and changed if something's off. The idea of being in a much longer drawing, you generally will like try to really really work out the rhythm and uh, the shapes. before breaking down like the anatomy and the shadow patterns and stuff.
Anyway, the secret sauce to doing this stuff. Well, first off, you have to kind of know what direction you're heading and, and what you need to study, what you're going to be focusing on studying. I have resources that I'm pulling from. Some of them are from Proco and a few other things. So I know what I'm studying, or what available, what resources I have available to study from. And then it's a matter of putting in the repetition and the effort. And some of that is going to be in tonight's uh, on poses. I may have us do a Russian figure academy for our first 10 instead of a photo. Because that, like working from a drawing, might be a good way to kind of start before we segue into working from photos. Honestly, you could just like draw nothing but Russian Figure Academy and old masters painting and old masters drawings for like long last time. You get a lot out of it. So one or two of those might be our our first two warm-ups before we get to the f human photos. For the longer poses, I mean. It really, really helps to kind of watch videos at, or like look at drawing, look, watch videos and to see how it's done over and over again. There's a lot of YouTube, like a, it's a lot of YouTube demos on um, Proko's web page. But if you can see like live demos where like you can actually see like usually traditional sometimes digital artists do this too if you can see ones where the uh instructor or the demo the person do the demo is uh where you actually get to see how they move their arm and and stuff uh those ones i do strongly recommend people check out because it'll give you some heading about how but how you're supposed to apply your dexterity to when you're making your marks I'd love to find a um, Wacom type, type pen that I can use sideways, that I can hold sideways like a like a charcoal pencil or a paintbrush. There might be some that exist. I'm sure that they are. I'm sure that they do. Or some of the more I, like because I have an older Cindy pen, so maybe some of the new newer ones are more conducive to, to doing that kind of thing. So some of what I'm using tonight is uh, actually a major theme of what I'm using tonight is Riley Method Rhythms. Uh, I'll give some handout-ish stuff to help with that a little bit. But bear in mind when I'm doing these, like I'm not as I'm not as well rehearsed in using these methods. And that's why I'm doing this practice for one thing, haha. <laughs> but um, I'm also combining it with a lot of other stuff too. So a major error that I got on this guy right here is his torso. Here, look, I'll show you. Seems to be a recurring problem with me where I get like the angle of the torso wrong or something. I get thrown off by something and then so this is uh, a little bit closer to uh, his torso should be right here. Let's see. So his chest down like that. 
and his hips are going more like this, kind of. So the line of action of his body is going more like that. Actually, that's not too hard to fix. I think I can do that a little bit. Try that. But he's definitely more relaxed, like, especially in like, the belly area here. Uh, would you consider this uh, more... Uh, why would you consider this a mistake rather than just, uh, you know, pushing the pose in a... Because it's not quite what he's doing. I see. Like, and also like the, the weight of his, like, of how relaxed he is. Uh, is something that reads a little bit more true to me. And it's something that I know I missed out on, that I didn't get right that I would have wanted to. Like, uh, there's a difference between making decisions. Well, I mean, like, sometimes you're gonna kind of overlook stuff inherently, especially in quick sketch. But like, oh man, that was like, a, for me it was like, oh man, that was a major thing going on with that pose that I that I missed out on, that I didn't get quite right. It would have added right. something to the drawing added. if I'd included it. And uh, let's get the, okay, well, we're done with that side, so, okay, Google, stop. So something I am actually maybe going to encourage people to do, maybe do like, for, maybe like for the 20 minutes at least, not for the 10s, but for the 20 minute poses, maybe consider doing like a two to five minute comp real quick before you do the actual drawing. That'll be when we do the, uh, the 20 minute one, but basically you'll do like one of these where you try to, you're allowed to be kind of you're allowed to like, jump at the pose and kind of see what's working and what isn't when you try attacking it the first time. And that becomes like uh, something that helps you show what mistakes and what, uh, what helps you observe in a first quick pass what mistakes and what observations you can make from the pose. It gives you a, a better plan of attack from when you do the, the long drawing. I'm probably not going to do that myself. But that is something that I would encourage people to do. It'll give you more insight into the pose before you rush in. Sure. And a major thing I'm gonna have I'm gonna be pushing in myself and the people here tonight is to try to slow down. Because you'll, if you slow down, you'll actually get faster. Because you'll be making smarter decisions. Or you'll tra be training your, you'll be training yourself to make smarter decisions that eventually start building up to speed. So instead of making like a billion different lines for the same thing, you may, you are able to make like one or two lines that describe the thing. And that saves you a lot of time because you made smarter decisions. And that's something that I'm working on getting better at. There's no shortcut, you just gotta keep practicing and uh, forcing yourself to slow down whenever you're able to. And sometimes it takes a lot that you have to do like a lot of really crappy quick drawings to, before you can start slowing down. Like you kind of got to get that nervous energy out of you before you can like slow down and work up in confidence. Okay, Google, set timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. That'll be the rest of our break. Take a look at what people are doing. So I might have us do a Russian figure academy pose. Oh, that's looking pretty nice. This is looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm seeing a oh wow, yeah. Aganima, this is a because I'm seeing some i I'm seeing some big improvements. There's a proportional issues, like especially on that leg down there. But uh But I'm definitely seeing a, a big some improvements for you. 
uh, I would say pay attention to proportion and when we get into the long poses, pay attention to um, sizing the using the head as a unit of measurement to make sure you're getting proportions right, and keep and keep that in mind. When stuff foreshortens, it's going to change the measurement of the head size of stuff. Just going through, just getting an overview of everyone's posing warm ups. Arts and goodies. Uh, arts and goodies, I'm going to encourage you to get as large pieces of traditional paper as you possibly can and draw on that instead of digital, because I think digital might wind up holding you back. These kind of look very floaty and whispery, and I kind of feel like I, w I, w I want you to have... Uh, I want you to have more freedom to, att to like, utilize, utilize more of your dexterity and also build up your confidence more. Uh, I would also consider, like, if you are going to do digital, I would consider uh, doing drawovers of the poses, even tonight, because that might actually help you a great deal. It's looking neat. There's, uh, there's little issues and stuff here and there, supposed to like there and there. And but this one's looking, uh, like, the biggest problem with this one is the forearm, the, the this upper arm is a little long, so this forearm and hand need to be moved up a bit. Overall, this figure is working pretty good for a quick sketch. Oh, that, that foot's getting a little stumpy there on that leg. That, that leg in the calf looks, looks, looks pretty good for me. I mean, I'm making lots of mistakes myself, too. Uh, I use my eyes to just point out where I see them in other people's. That one's a really good one right there. This is really good too, and that too. There is some issues going on here with like how the torso is there, but part I think part of that was because it was really hard to see that part of that torso in the shadow. Um, so it kind of threw a lot of people off. Okay, Google, stop. Yeah, and also like if you're drawing like really this basic, that's okay, uh, especially if you're pretty new. Like if if you if you really need to concentrate on gesture, I would suggest like just keeping it at that level and like taking multiple passes of the pose. Yeah, these have a lot of nice energy to them. I would say very simple. The good warm ups from earlier. Yeah. Spike diesel. I'm gonna keep pointing in the direction of trying because they're fairly new, so. They're trying to, they're trying to, I think they're trying to wrestle with a lot of stuff that's going to take a lot of time to kind of sink in. But I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to encourage them to um, look for exercises. Like, I get pointed them to the, the Alex Wu gesture drawing class, for example, and to draw a box because that will help them. I, I, I want to see them start. I mean, it's okay to kind of just jump in and, uh, and try to build something. Because I see you trying to wrestle with shapes, construction stuff and like trying to put gesture in and stuff but a lot of it is kind of you're, you're you're doing a lot of kind of this nervous scribbly line that in parts are kind of helpful like these little spirals here those are that's the tornado right there i recognize that it's helpful but then it's like that floor grid while that is a floor grid that doesn't really that doesn't really feel to me like it's going off to a vanishing point um there's other things too like this figure doesn't feel like it's very well balanced uh, but I see bits and pieces of stuff that, like, once you start, like, clearing the noise out of your, uh, like, of your head of, like, trying to take on way too much at once and concentrate on one particular thing at a time, you'll be able to excel a lot more. And, uh, another benefit of that is you won't be making, like, as nervous, sketchy, chicken scratchy lines. Um, that's also what I wanted to do to check out Drawbox, because there's guides there on how to make like more confident lines so like here i'm going to give you uh I'll tell you what i'm going to give you and the folks here before we go into our next set a quick pointer and i, I think I, i'm going to strongly encourage everyone here to do this too let's do let's do some line drills so first line drill you draw two dots and you try to get a line between them like that two dots 
line between them. Do that a few times, um, and, or do that intermittently. Here's another. Uh, here's another exercise. Uh, ellipses. So go, go your hand over the page before you actually put the line down, but I want you to put a clean ellipse down. As clean an ellipse as you can. It, it's okay if you kind of mess it up a bit. Just like put down different ellipses of different shapes and sizes and angles and stuff. Like, and even if they're like a little bit kind of lumpy, like that one right there, and just move on to another one. Uh, one exercise from Drawbox that actually combines the mm -hmm. the line drill and the ellipse drill is uh, by doing using the ghosting method you're using to create a plane and then fit an ellipse inside that plane. Yeah, I I, I have some examples of it right here. I can post it on the chat. Sure. Mm -hmm. These are just from some warm-ups. Uh, from my experience, the most useful way to do this kind of practice is, uh, is as a warm-up before you start drawing, like each day. Mm -hmm. That way it doesn't get you boring because you don't have to invest too much time in it. Yeah. But it does help over time a lot. Another thing is that often you'll see like uh, people during a figure drawing class, you'll see them do this like on their pad in between, in between the sets or before they start the sets for the day. That's why I'm having people do this. So I'm, I'm making some boxes now, some random boxes, overlapping the shapes in front of each other a little bit too. These are a little bit more sketchy. It's kind of, uh, and you also like, you want to start adjusting. You want to use this to kind of adjust yourself, adjust your arm so you can get more confident strokes and stuff like, like I've, I've noticed that like I'm getting kind of really nervous with how I'm holding my pencil when doing these ellipses here. So I sort of adjusted my grip on the pen and now I can get more kind of rhythmic. Here's another exercise right here. Rhythmic curves right here. Like that. And you can also do this. You turn those rhythmic, rhythmic curves into a 3D shape by adding ellipses at certain point that are turned in certain directions. You can also do like, here, let's see here. Anyway, like these, all, all these kinds of exercises are to get like your kind of your penmanship going. You want to get like, you can do stuff like this too, where you do it like kind of just lines in different directions and stuff. Sort of gauge how you can pull straight lines. So on. Um, you test yourself with how you change direction with your line like this. I'm gonna start with a straight, then do a curve. Start with a straight, do an S curve. Anyway, do that a little bit more until you're uh, kind of comfortable with it, and uh, we're going to get started on a uh, set of two tens now. But yeah, this little thing right here, I want to be a little bit more diligent about doing it because I get better results whenever I do stuff like this. I kind of just like juice my hand. Uh, so 
with that in mind, we're going to go to the next set. But I'm going to say that like people like um, people like Spike Diesel, actually a lot of people here, or everyone here really, should be doing this. Um, is this is this the, how they told you to draw them? Because these are not ellipses right here. Ellipses don't warp yeah, like don't, no, ellipses, uh, don't, ellipses don't yeah ellipses don't warp like that. Don't warp like that. These yeah. are just mistakes. Yeah, they are. Ellipses actually maintain being ellipses no matter how you warp them, uh, how no matter how perspective distorts them. That's what makes them ellipses. One of the things. But anyway, so we're gonna go to a set of tens. Uh, I'm gonna actually put on the Russian Figure Academy stuff for this. But we will go back to the male figure photos too. Uh, I think it's important to start with the Russian Figure Academy stuff or some old master stuff because that will because uh, trying to break down someone else's drawing who has kind of worked out stuff for you. Um, Can help illuminate things for you when you're doing a uh, long pose. So let's pick a let's pick a couple poses here to do. Actually, no, we've done most of these, and I, we're kind of jaded to them. So I may actually have us just go straight into photos. I think I'll just do that. I mean, all of it's good studying, regardless. So now I'll just pick pick something for our first ten minute pose. It's gotta be something really so how about this guy here because we already just did uh well first off he's a well he's kind of a vignette so his legs are cut off so maybe not him i'm gonna find a really plain pose in here something that's very clear this is pretty good. This one's also really dynamic too, so we'll use this one to start with. All right, okay, Google set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds, starting now. So this is a 10 minute pose, so this is essentially a 10 minute quick sketch as opposed to a long pose drawing. But some of the features of a long pose drawing I want people to kind of utilize. Uh, one of them is mark the top and bottom of roughly where you're going to contain the pose on the page. Uh, and try to get kind of like a engagement of like the side to side width of where the pose is. And ghost in a little kind of guideline for yourself. But this is essentially a quick pose, so. Alright. So, usually when you do a long pose, you want to establish the head first. I'm going to kind of try to guesstimate his head somewhere in there and start with like an oval shape. Gonna try to keep things in very rhythmic rhythmic form. For the most part, I might delve into some shapes. Let's see here. So I'm sort of setting up the side plane of his head there with that little crash test dummy thing. We see the back of his head here, the back of his neck right there. And we'll see curve for that. The underside of his jaw is kind of indicated very, very basically there. So we got the pit of his neck here. That's going to create a center line down to the pit of his crotch about, roughly about here, I'd say. got this prominent rhythm of this top of his thigh there. He's got the squared off edge of his knee. But then it curves under here like that. Let's... So 
I'm getting kind of the rhythms going of his screen left leg. So I'm using this as like the that's that's where I'm marking like his rhythm of his hip. And there's this line that's going up here to the side corner of his neck. And then I use this top of roughly about the top of the shoulder somewhere here to create this kind of rhythm right here that's creating the intersection of the bend of the torso right there. Uh, essentially what I'm doing is like, so you got this torso from the front, this is a Riley method thing. So you got your center right there, you got the tops of your shoulders there. So you got your center line here, goes down to the pit of the crotch. Then you got these two rhythms that are kind of doing this to the pit of the crotch. And then from the corners of the neck, you also got these two rhythms that are going about right here to the sides of the hips. Here's your pelvis right here. Here's your rib cage right there. Here is your shoulders. And then your arms, you can just handle like a singular rhythm like that like this it's bent legs same thing and then just break it down further you can add like kneecaps place where the knees are in the direction of the legs and so on this is essentially a super crude version of what i'm trying to do right here Another thing about um, when you're doing these is you start to get a better sense of them. Try to make them pleasing to the eye and dynamic and fun to look at. Like, look at look at how his thigh seems to almost curve as almost a singular shape. It's not actually a singular shape, but I can like carve into this later to make it into 3D forms. I I know that what's happening there is 3D, and I'm keeping that in mind as I draw it. But I'm using this to kind of design a uh, to design a fun looking shape on this on this body. It's weird kind of hyperextension thing going on here with the arm a little bit. That's a little odd when I when I do the rhythm for it though. Let me maybe try to. Make this more like a singular rhythm. So another thing that we've done before is we correlate limbs to each other. In this case, I'm correlating the feet to each other here. And I kind of see that, uh, kind of see in doing that, that I made this calf really, really long. I'm going, to create, I'm going to do a cardinal, cardinal sin here of scooting this up instead of erasing it and redrawing it. So a simple way to handle feet when doing rhythms is like you got a leg here, bottom of the foot, heel, front of the foot. And there's your foot. You can also like add a little bit more to the front of the foot. It's different angles and stuff. Adjusting this a little bit because this is actually going further to the right than I drew it, even though it is like an, even though it did feel nice to draw that. Get a little bit of the corner of the chair in there. 
Maybe draw a little bit of what he's sitting on here with his still leg. It's a pretty satisfying quick sketch. I'm just playing with inserting little bits of anatomy in here, and it's almost time to go to the next drawing. These are really fucking tiny. I can blow these up on the page later, but... So we're not going to use this pose. Pick another suitable one that would be good for 10. Possibly this one, I would say. That one's pretty gar darn good too, but uh, let's see if we can find one that gives like a good full front view. Oh, this, oh we did this one. Oh, that one's pretty good. Okay, Google, add one minute to timer. Done. One minute added to your timer. All right, there we go. All right, so as before, mark the bottom and the top of your page where the uh, pose is going to occur. Try to give yourself a good deal of space. Try to find where the widest points of where of the space that this pose occupies and get little horizontal and vertical axes going. Alright, so once you have that, you should be able to start triangulating the space that the pose occupies. I'm going to start with an ovoid shape for the head. I know what direction the ovoid is facing in. Now I know side plane of the head right there. Establish a little bit more of the jaw. So the nose in there. Some of the brow. I think I made him a little bit too far too. 
left, so I'm going to push it to the right a bit. And again, these are um, quick sketches, so... Pick out those tops of the shoulders just about. That center line going there. Looks to me that the shoulders are kind of tilted this way a bit. The shoulders are kind of tilted like this way, and then the hips are kind of doing this. A little bit to me. That's what it looks like. I may adjust that a little bit because the camera angle is a little odd on this. Kind of feels like a low low camera angle to me. Try to get like a rhythm that gets all the way down to the floor for me. There ish, I want to say. The secondary rhythm on the other leg there. The hands will be about here. A little too far too early into that. Okay. So get those shoulder rhythms going here. So I had something to kind of work work off of with that last pose of like this kind of overall stylized shape thing going on here. Uh, this one's a little trickier because there's not really anything that can I can really grab onto. So I have to be a little bit more straightforward with it. Boring poses are harder to draw because you can't latch on to something, uh, something to save you as easily. But you got to do them too. So not everything you're going to be drawing is going to be turned up to eleven. Unfortunately, this is just still a 10 minute quick sketch, so it's okay to get a little bit screwy with this. Like, I'm test driving stuff that, uh, that I know could probably go wrong during a long pose, and it's good for me to be cognizant of that going into the long poses.
but I'll try to give us a pose that is like something we can really dig into for a good 20 minutes. So I don't know, uh, we might do another set of 210s or we might go into, I'm thinking we'll probably just go into doing the 20s. Oh my god. We got time for at least two more 20s tonight, and maybe some additional something. Maybe we can do some quicker poses for a cool down. Now it's starting to come together a little bit more. Like, some of what I had down there is working. Josh Hunter Black, yeah, uh, maybe we can take a look at him during the break. So feel free to suggest other artists to check out, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm all down with learning from people that are way fucking better draftsmen than me, for sure. I'm here to learn. I mean, this is a study session for me and for you. It's something I've always said, and it always remains to be. It's never not going to be the case, honestly, it, even if I do get really, really fucking good. Like, streams like this are study sessions for me. But I feel like, after like lots and lots of trial and error, I think I've finally hit on a, a general mentality and a formula that's starting to work for me and get starting to push me in the results that in the direction of the results I want to get. I'm still, I'm still like in flux on trying to figure out how to be more effective about that, but it's kind of weird that it's taken this long to work up to that, but I think I really need to like concentrate on quick poses for a while to work up confidence and gesture. Like I've been exposed to so many different ways that the human figure could be posed in and thinking about like the gravity and the rhythm behind them that that I think that comes out a little bit more in my long poses now. So now now's the time to do long poses and think about structure more. And to just be relentless about it. Like, can't kill the momentum. Gotta keep building on it. Like, a big mistake, like, I've, I've mentioned this before, but a big mistake I made, like, last year a lot when I was trying to run these classes. I was trying to do too much. Like, I was trying to do an animation class, trying to do a storyboard class. Oh, today we're focused on this and that. We're saying that we're gonna do that. Blah, blah. No, no. Uh, the way I gotta do it, because these are study sessions, I gotta treat them like a natural progression that builds on the stuff, everything that we did in the last class. So then there's continuity me oh, and uh that's the end of the end of ten minute sets. See? Okay Google okay Google stop. Also I wanna invite people to come play Valheim with me this weekend. I got that medieval city started that I want to continue working on, and we can also play the game normally because I, I, I still haven't beat the the the, uh, the third boss, and I, that would be really fun to do because that boss is really challenging. Even the se I would say even the second boss is really fun. We can we can maybe just like have everyone do do the bosses in succession. To get everyone on the same page. 
but it should be really fun. I'd love to get like a group together and act as a, a commander, basically. Uh, for like building some cool ass shit and uh and going on themed construction expeditions like I'd be everyone would be everyone would basically be like my units in in a World of Warcraft RTS kind of or a Warcraft RTS. I will be assigning peons to stone gathering duty or lumber gathering duty or hunter or whatever. I don't know. Builders. Not really. I mean, it's just going to. I'll have a loose. I'll have like loose idea guidelines for that. People can do what they want, but. Um, be fun to do some kind of like peon roleplay at some point, but. Main thing is, is I have like a big giant ass city, and I'm gonna give like people some loose guidelines of zones, uh, like zoning for buildings and stuff, of uh, structures that we can build, and I'll supply people with materials because I have magic advent powers. But we can also play the game normally too on like a normal server. Okay, Google, set timer for three minutes. Three minutes, and we're starting now. So we do need to start strategizing about what we're going to be using for the first 20 minute pose. I'm hoping something from here will give us what we need for a good 20 minutes. But I'm not so sure. I mean, this one would be great. Um, it's got to be more. I mean, there are some great poses that would work. Oh, that would be really fun, but that's an unusual pose. I want something really plain that's like pretty blatant. Like, uh, so we may go back to the Russian figure academy for the 20 minutes. Do 30 minutes there. It's too much of a mix here. This one might be a good one to do at 20. Let's maybe try looking online real quick to see if we can find any good reference. I'm going to have to keep it off screen in case of nudes, but let's see here. Here we go. Uh, I found something that might be promising. Okay, Google, stop.
Oh, uh, actually, before we move on to the 20s, I want to talk a little bit about doing um, turnarounds. So turnarounds are super fucking helpful for just, like, your general understanding of the figure. So the, these poses right here, I did not set out to do this as an animated turnaround, I just did it as an experiment to see how it would look if I animated it. And some of the things that went wrong is, if you notice the feet are kind of jumping around. Uh, the, in the shoulders rise and fall. And the chest volume kind of inflates. There's also a lot of funky things happening in the arms. I think the upper arm, for the most part, is kind of looks like kind of tracks moving three dimensionally, but the lower arm is kind of waggling and stuff. But anyway, uh, doing I'm gonna do like maybe another one of these tomorrow, um, and try to do one that I, that's more worked out for animation. But in order to do these, you need to uh, start with you start with five initial poses. Uh, you do. Let's use this head as an head as an example. So you do a profile, a front, and a three quarter, three quarter front, and a three quarter back, like here. Then, um, if you have an animation software and stuff, I usually like to do it on. Um, I usually like to do do these rotations on twos. You come in and then you um, you can just like reverse the image right here. You only need five poses and then you reverse it for when it rotates. You see, for, and this works obviously for symmetrical figures. What's cool though is that you can start with a symmetrical figure and if there's something that's asymmetrical in it, you can add the asymmetrical thing to the, to the animation drawing by drawing for the full rotation, basically. Because you're creating new drawings when you flip them and stuff, essentially, so. Um, so like on this, for example, I start with like, here's one, two, three, four, and then uh, five. Oh yeah, that's what that's what it was. That was the fifth pose right there. Fifth pose is from the back. So it's back, front, three quarter back, three quarter front, profile. So those are the five poses you need. And then uh, from there, you uh, create in-betweens. This is an in-between. That's an in-between, that's an in-between, that's an in-between, that's an in-between, 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 in-between. Notice these are flipped. It's the same drawing, because I flip the in-betweens also. So for the cost of about, like, five drawings, you can extrapolate enough information to get a full rotation, basically. Um, you're going to want to pay attention to 3D form and you're going to have to want to be sliding back and forth between the things you're working on them or between the two drawings to make sure it's feeling right. right. Like in this case, I have a pretty good sense of 3D form. You can definitely see it on that ellipse down there for the neck. And uh, you can also see it like on how I track like the nose. For example, on the front of the face, because I have the center line, and I use that Ethan Becker wedge that we've used before on the face, and you can see like the side plane, the ellipse right here for the the side plane of the head. It flattens and it, it grows, flattens, so it turns in 3D space. And this is basically this is like based on my I didn't do any measurements for this. This is like freehand approximations of. How the face works and i know like how the corner of the jaw curves around the front of the face for example so as you can see the underside of the jaw now when it turns around like that but this is really nice like this this turnaround i do right here i can use as a point of reference to like do another do like different characters and stuff like i don't even i can draw a completely different face using this as a reference point for myself and I may just do that. I may do just that, actually. Uh, but yeah, that's for a head. Um, talking a little bit more about bodies. So uh, for doing turnarounds of character of like simpler characters, like this rough turnaround I did of my OC Space Dad. 
uh, I used very, very simple shapes. Like, I kind of use these sort of mat. I sort of use, like, these interlocking shapes here. That are kind of like bony mat. Uh, like, a, they're, they're kind of, they kind of look like bones, don't they? But they're, like, kind of structured forms that help describe the 3D form of uh, his limbs. And I have, like, his little circles for his kneecaps and stuff. And just simple potato shapes for his feet. But I can use this to like extrapolate a more complex design onto it, and uh, just to show you like the value of uh, like doing doing this to understand how stuff turns around three dimensionally is is what leads you up to doing stuff like say let me let me bring up this real quick, Sir Kugaburu Castlevania. Uh, let me see if I can find a good one here. I think it, I think it might be in this one. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at this. So, check this out. Now, this is why we're doing all this practice, because I want to be able to do stuff like this in the future. Look at the rough animation up top here. You can see how they're using like the little simple lines right there to track over the form. Uh, which is also like part of the character mob, the character model for the. Um... I'll check that out. Look. So he did like a, for some of the in betweens, he did like very very rough kind of quick sketchy type stuff right here. You can see you can you can see like the side plane of the head. You can see the front of the face. You can see the top of the head. This is like anatomy of the top of the shoulders and stuff. Uh, but you can see a more elaborately worked out version of the character model. Right here, with more of the anatomy embedded in here, at the clavicle, right there, and you can see how it is on the final model here with the anatomy and stuff, the side of the serratus and so on. But yeah, like that, really simple kind of quick sketch stuff right here. Yeah, check this out. Like side plane of the head, front plane of the head, top plane of the head, top of the shoulders, back, right there, back plane, uh, t like top of the, top of the torso, top of the shoulders and stuff. And of course, it's worked out more by the cleanup artists. Some of the frames have like more elaborate versions of the character model, like this, for example, which is. Reference for the cleanup artist, also. But yeah, I mean, this is why we're doing this practice, because, like, uh, that's the kind of stuff I want to do. But I need to work myself up to it. And we are doing long poses tonight, so we get a much more in-depth understanding of how these, uh, these figures work. So we really slow down to think about them. So we are going to go into the 20-minute pose set. We're going to have at least two 20-minute post sessions close, uh, for the evening, and we might close out with a quick post session to cool down at the end. So, let's pick what we're going to do. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. I found some good reference. I found some very good reference, actually. So, I'm gonna... I'm not gonna, like, show an array of it, but, um... Oh, here we go. So, something from here... I wanna use. It's a bunch of art station male bodybuilder poses. Let's see here. Art Station, Male Bodybuilder, Comic Reference for Art. This is free. There we go. Goody. Good shit. So we'll use one of the poses for this. I'm gonna say maybe either this one or this one. Probably these will be our two poses right here. That one and that one. So it's a question of which one we do first. This one's kind of an upshot, but there's nothing in the way of the torso. 
So I think we're going to do this one first. So I'm going to actually like, let's see here. Let's make a separate folder here. This real quick. I'm going to make a quick, uh, I'm going to make like a two drawing, uh, gesture drawing folder for this real quick. I'll make a, like a two pose. Two pose. So that one, and that one. Although I do like this one, so we may consider this one because like we were, I was talking about showing the top of the torso from those uh, animation draw, uh, from the animation drawings we were looking at. So maybe we'll do that one for the second pose. But I think we should start with this one because there's nothing in the way of the torso. Just bear in mind there is some kind, there's a little bit of, well, This one might be better because it's a plain pose, actually. I think we'll do it. So this will be the first pose. His arm is in the way, but it's a more kind of like straight on comprehensible pose. And there's not really any camera warping shit going on with it, so. All right. There we go. Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. That's starting now. Okay, dokie. All right, so this is a 20 minute pose. So I really want you to pay really close attention to it. Um, but actually here, one sec, I'm, you know what? Uh, I'm going to turn my monitor vertically for this one. So give me a second. I'm going to actually have to change uh, the layout of OBS real quick. So feel free to get started on this. But... Uh, and I'm gonna oh hang on folks I'm gonna be changing the la the layout of the displays real quick. Push that up and that way. My desk is doing an art transformers thing right now, converting into vertical pose mode. Now I'm going to Mega Pose, and now I'm going to switch OBS over to the Magical Vertical Cintiq mode. Haha! -ha. And this is how we're going to be drawing this. Okay, Google, add two minutes to timer. Done. Two minutes added to your timer. Good shit. Alright. So i got plenty of space to do this 20 minute pose on now. Big giant drawing space on my 22 inch Cintiq. And a little bit cut off. You're gonna be able to see the corner of his leg. That's a fit of a drive. But hey folks, if you donate to the stream, then I'll have I'll be able to have like multiple monitors set up so I can do this in a, in a drop of a hat in the future. So that I have something already set up vertically to do exactly this. Okay, so I got the top of the page there. bottom somewhere around here I'll say so his hands the widest point is his hand somewhere over here his toe up from the floor somewhere here I want to say and I triangulated my pose. I think this is in the ballpark of his head, what I have right now. Hit of his neck right there. Let's get the gesture of his body down here, down to the floor. Keep it nice and light. Draw really light. 
like you're not making any final decisions here. Kind of figuring out the pose a little bit first before you get too far into it. There is also going to be a. T I know that I know for a fact there's going to be a tendency for me to. Uh, there's going to be a tendency for me to draw this a lot more elongated because of the um, the, the narrow space I have to work on. One. So that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind when doing this one. Three, four, six. So I know that the bottom of his left, the heel of his left boot would be about here in proportion to his head. Um, the heel of his right boot. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, I'm marking off like this head, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five. So heel of his shoe about there, bottom of his shoe goes down a little further. Uh, hips are kind of occupying the center here. They're tilted a little bit. His shoulders are really tilted. He wants to scoot his head over to the left side a bit. really kind of squatting. So maybe his Let's go on. His knee comes about to about here. That means his hand is actually going to be somewhere over. I'm making adjustments to my triangulation now. One, two, three. He is squatting, so the length of the, the length of the bottom of his crotch to the top of his head is going to be large, longer than of his heels up. I have to zoom back slightly so I get myself more space. Now that I kind of have a general overview of his pose, I'm going to try to get my gesture a little bit better established. Let's on that. Okay, let's see. Let's take a good long look at him. So this, for sure, it's working for me. Gotta remember to keep it simple. 
pit of the neck going down to the crotch. Big old torso turn. That. Stance is pretty wide, so maybe wide in the thigh a bit more out. So his upper arm on the left side is a little is pointing towards us and it's for short a bit. There's his back arm over here holding the stick. It's running pretty parallel to our vision. Or perpendicular to our vision, whatever. I'm going to kind of oh, go through this now and try to push little things in the gesture that make me feel a little bit more like spirit of his pose, his posture. His stance maybe should be a bit wider. Or shortening should be more apparent. This guy's really fucking thick arms. So this is like a 20 minute play drawing, almost. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus 10 minutes and 22 seconds. Cool, good ways in. I might be able to get some shape in, but I want to really concentrate on the gesture if I'm able to, at the rhythm.
arms are so thick. So I think his head might. I actually might want to push it up a bit or shrink it. Let me think. Think about that for a moment. What am I? What's going off here? So pit of the deck. That shoulder's coming down more. So. Feeling a little stumpy to me. Why is that? Probably because I don't have a stance wide as wide as it should be. Like this, perhaps. A little stumpy, and it feels like there should be more of a lean to his body than I'm getting right now. So the magic of gesture drawing or a rhythm drawing is we'll make those adjustments pretty quickly. We'll widen this leg over here a bit more. See if anything's looking funky when I flip it. Working surprisingly well. Also, you can flip it here too. Whoops. Sorry. Flipping it so it helped me see the like, shape of the color was important. Let's see here. Let's try to pick out some of the structures a little bit more a little bit more resolutely.
Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus one minute and 53 seconds. This dude looked me looking a little funky. It's definitely not my best 20 minute pose, but I mean, we're doing these to get better at them. Okay, Google, stop. All right, so next pose. After this guy, we'll probably either that one or this one. Probably this one. I think you want to play the next one. Is that right? No. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, Google, set timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes, and that's starting now. So there is some stuff I did get out of this, even though, like, there's things that got really wonky, especially in the legs. Like, it's a feeling to his volumes that I definitely did get out of that. Um, I think I started to get a little confused in the legs, and that's a sign that I probably need to work on legs more. But anytime you do something like this, it's an opportunity to kind of see if you can fix things a bit. Part of it, I think, is also that I have part of the screen covering his leg uh, when I was trying to look at him. So. Oh yeah, that's much better. Yeah, now I can see the whole pose. I was handicapping myself before. Okay, now that I can see the whole pose, I can correlate the legs a little bit better. So... What the hell? What the? Uh, why did this all get copied? I must have hit something. Okay. 
Also, this is labeled as the wrong file, so... Why does this keep reverting to the different file name? Kind of annoying. All right, now that I can see the whole pose, and this is starting to come to part of what part of what's going to be uh, what's going to be getting me better results is like figuring out how to set up my workspace in a way where I can like see the pose easier. <laughs> so I was handicapping myself somewhat by having part of my vision cut off from the from the monitor. So let's see here. Um, gesture comp there. In fact, I'm going to do a little cheat before the next pose. Let's see, what should we do? Actually, I'm tempted to do this pose. Well, yeah, we should probably do this one. So I'm going to do a quick gesture comp before we actually do the time pose so that I can have like a little bit, a little bit of an overview of how the, what's going on in this pose before uh, drawing it. So his body is severely foreshort towards us. I think this pose might be a little bit complex, actually, when there's like more plain stuff we need to concentrate on first before getting into that. So this guy actually might be better for the closing pose tonight. So I'm gonna do a quick comp study of him. So the point of doing this is I'm trying to get some of like the life and the character into it and also like think about some of what's going on here for when I strategize about how I'm going to do this for the long pose. Looks very much like a He-Man action figure, doesn't he? So you've got the waist going on there. Okay, Google, stop. I'm gonna finish doing this comp study before we start the the 20 minute pose with him.
pump study's not meant to be accurate, it's a gesture study, basically. Or uh, a value study, in some cases. But it's a kind of a preliminary pass at the figure to sort of work out stuff and get a plan of attack. What you're gonna do. So now that I have this, feel free to be doing a comp study of your own while I'm doing this. Now that I have this, I can shrinky dink that, put it on the upper right here, have that near me while I'm doing this, this next one. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't quite get right in this, but that uh, that can tell me where, where my eye is fooling me. So let's see here. Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Yeah, so here we go. I suppose of the evening. Unless we do some... Uh, unless we do some... One, two... So his po this pose is five and a half heads tall. Unless we do some quick poses at the end, which we might. One, two, three, four, five. Five and a half heads tall down there. If I can get like the lean of his body a bit, scoot that a little. It's gonna be in the way of my comp. Or so established a little bit. Bottom of the crotch right there.
I'm gonna try to play a little less timid. So my pose is gonna go kind of odd right now because I'm feeling like I'm getting way too timid with this. So I'm gonna try to be a little bit more bold with what I with what I do. Uh, this does mean that I'm going to be rushing things a bit, but I kind of need to work at this pace right now. I feel. I'm trying to be observant right now, what I'm doing. I'm not talking too much. So let's see here. Make the last post of the evening a really effective one, so I'm concentrating a little bit more. I want to get effective study, I want this stuff to sink in.
Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? You've got 11 minutes and 26 seconds remaining. So I've sort of turned this into a 20 minute quick sketch now, uh, instead of a straight up lay in, but that's okay. Probably what it's going to be like until I get fully acclimated to doing long poses again. But the point is to really sit down and pay attention to a singular, singular pose for like a full 20 minutes. Really think about what's going on in it. Adjust it and analyze. Figure stuff out. Evaluate what stuff you get right, what stuff you get wrong. What a challenge. So much I got wrong in this dude. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of like stodgy stuff that's like really kind of jammed together a little bit too much. Like But I don't think I think like doing an adjustment thing of him later should be able to fix a lot of what's going on here. fact still have the poses yeah I do okay. Let's bring this in here I'll close out the evening with a draw over study again be pretty good. First, let me see, like, how off I was. 
what kind of stuff that I was seeing when I was looking at that my eyes were lying to me about or mistakes that I'm making that are not quite right to how the body works. Okay. So I wasn't too far off in some ways, but... So that's a, lots of little things here. So... Grand bush for opacity on this. Now I'm going to do a draw over corrective study. Because that will double my learning for the evening. I figure out, hmm, this, this thing looks off to me. Why is it looking off? Well, I'm going to do a draw over study to find out why and how to fix it. So the basic structure of the torso, I think I got pretty close. Uh, there's stuff like the placement of the arm and the, sho and the shoulder that I got kind of off. And how the legs are socketed into the waist. And also I made the legs a little bit too bulky. I think for a practice tomorrow, I'm going to try doing a lot of drawovers like this. I think this, doing this, doing basically what I do in the long post, what I'm supposed to be doing in the long post at least. Uh, drawing over photographs would probably be really beneficial. Yeah, if you get a pose wrong, or if you think you can do better, or if there's more info you want to pull from it, you can do this. I actually did really like how that hand, the rhythm of that hand turned out though, even if it's off. So you're not looking for something that like is going to be one to one a trace uh, like a tracing of the figure when you do these long poses and stuff, but you want something that kind of is in the same spirit, and uh, you want stuff you want it to be thought out so that it's more plausible. Like I made a lot of mistakes that made my model less plausible, made him stodgy in parts, made him stiff in others. And I'm doing this so like I'm not not so that I can like get perfect at Xeroxing what, what I'm seeing when I do the model, but so that I understand what's going on here, what was off, what was off when I was doing it. This foot is definitely getting bigger as it's closer towards us in the camera. There is some camera warping things that are kind of throwing this off a bit, for sure. Like this hand back here is way smaller because of the camera perspective warping that's going on here. Anyway, so that's my suggested homework for you guys. Do some more 10 and 20 minute post studies. You time yourself for 10 or 20 minutes per pose. And then also do a lot of draw over studies like these. Try to use poses that are really clear. This one so that where the bottle gets kind of bunched up will kind of
kind of mess you up at this stage, I think. Yeah, the main thing is just keep at it. I'm going to keep at it tomorrow. I'm going to be doing more study practice tomorrow for sure. I'll maybe hunt down some poses that are as good as these, but not as warped. So here's my quick sketch, my initial quick sketch. Actually, it doesn't feel too bad. I think there's stuff that I got better on the quick sketch than I did on the uh, the 20 minute. Okay, Google, stop. All right, good session, folks. I think this was my favorite pose of the night right here. This guy. I made some fun fun design decisions on his legs and stuff. This guy came out pretty good too. Yeah, this is how I draw when I'm inventing and doing purely gesture driven. You can see how like um, how much more vitality there is in these, like these little quick sketches and stuff. But I'm trying to do, I'm trying to re wrestle with shape and uh, shape and structure, so that's kind of making me stiffen up a bit. But main thing is just to keep at this. So let's take a look at what people have done in uh, Discord. That's fun. So some of these are like Ant, as Ant, I can see he's severely struggling in the legs and stuff. Uh, Ant, I would definitely recommend doing a draw or study of him. Uh, let's see here. These are pretty successful, I'd say. I mean, there's a, there are issues, but overall, these work pretty well. Uh, these ones, these ones are definitely lacking in confidence, and there's not a good sense of weight to them. Let's see here. That's what I can see you trying to true it up. I mean, the, these are uh, to be fair, these are really tough. These are really tough poses and stuff. But I see you started with like kind of that gesture and you tried to work out some more of the shapes and stuff in the second pass. Uh, in Ant, I would say definitely try to do a draw over and break down the gesture and the uh, and the shapes. These are really very successful, I would say. There are issues and stuff like with the foreshort in the legs and things like that, but there's these are pretty good practice, I would say. Spike is uh, still getting overwhelmed with a lot more information than they Spike's trying to take on way more information than they're ready for right now, I think, like I've been saying. I think I recognize some of the models that you're trying to use here. But...
<laughs> Pushing the pose, but you, there's a, some stuff that kind of get lost in the legs there. That one, this one is like more cartoony, exaggerated. What I've been saying, from what I'm seeing, that one on the left turned out really nice. There's, some, I think the calf got a little long here, but overall this overall this feels pretty good. And this kind of feel, this feels like the character's standing here. He's have good feelings for them. Here, yeah. There's a uh, proportional issues and placement of the head issues going on here. This one works a little better, I would say. Although they do get kind of dummy thick in the waist. There's, it looks like there's an unintentional exaggeration going on there. Let's see. My subconscious is working. It's unintentionally exaggerated, though. I mean, it, feel, it feels I, I, fine, I, I but... Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff is like people are trying to lift weights with muscles that they have uh, not... with muscle groups in their bodies that they've not worked before. So it's just a ma it's going to be a matter of building strength, and uh, also figuring out what you need when you need to peel back and and like concentrate on simpler steps of things. But trying to take on a tough, trying to take on these tough figures like this, like this, this kicked my ass this evening. Like this was a really bad pose that I did here. <laughs> uh, so uh, like I'm way more. I'm way more confident at like doing loose gestural things. Uh, so long poses are pretty rough for me at the moment at this moment. But let's see here. For I'm thinking for a bonus round, I'm gonna put on a Russian figure academy pose. Real quick. Do it for about ten minutes or so. Because we got about ten more minutes in the class, so I'll put on a Russian figure academy pose for about ten or ten or maybe even twenty minutes. Let me pick a good one, even if it's one that I've done before. But we need like to, we should definitely close out the evening on something that would be good for confidence building. Either this one or not that one. Something that's very plain. Um, possibly this one. I'm going to strongly recommend the newer people should do a draw over study for this last pose that we're going to be doing. And try to break it down into basic shapes. Okay, we'll do this guy. Let's just check a few more here. I think we'll do that guy though. I'll do that guy. I need to get like a library of a lot of different seated poses, seated or basic standing poses. If I can. So we'll do this guy. This guy will be 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, I'll set a timer for 20 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Let's do that. Uh, but we're not going to do uh, But this one, like, you can just do this however, treat it like a quick sketch. I'm gonna, uh, this is going to be a confidence building exercise. And I would recommend people here do a um, uh, do a draw over if you're pretty new or if you really feel like you need it. So, okay, Google set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and we're starting now. Let's try this. 
Check out my hand a bit. All right, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to regurgitate the figure quick sketch model that I meant to use more of this evening. Okay, yeah, this quick, this 10 minute quick sketch is definitely working pretty well so far. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's 15 minutes and 56 seconds remaining. So this is like a five minute quick sketch, basically, what I have right now. So what I'm doing right now is kind of a hybrid quick sketch. There's a little bits of anatomy, there's little bits of the Riley method rhythms in there, and there's little bits of structure. It's an approach to quick sketch that's uh, a little bit more flexible, I would say. 
but there are times to do like very, very rhythm driven or structure driven quick sketch. Also, I'm doing this very badly <laughs> compared to the people that I'm looking at. So I'm trying to model my practices after. Also, don't be satisfied with with yourself if you make if you do like something if you do like a crummy drawing or something. That's an opportunity for you to kind of dissect what went wrong. Drawer studies are good for that. And after meditating on it for a bit, take a, maybe a little extra time to do something like this. I decided to end tonight's class on this because I knew that this would be a nice morale boost myself and some of the folks here who have drawn this pose before. An opportunity to do more freely sketch as far as you handle this pose. I'm going to try to get this into hands this week, um, maybe on Friday. Um, I don't know if we'll do a hands focused class this, this week, but I'm going to try to get like some kind of hand drill related thing for Friday. Just doing a quick little. So sloppy in my hands. Some really scuffed hands here. At least get the thumb in. Oh, 
It's really fucking a bit of a mess down there. Oops. At least the thumb in and like the general rhythm of the knuckles. Maybe do some serious hand drills. I'm gonna maybe see if I can can do some hand drills tomorrow. Don't know if we'll do a, a hands focus class, but I want to at least get some hand drills in tomorrow myself. Hands and feet. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's seven minutes and 48 seconds to go. All right, well, I'm going to add a little bit, maybe a little you know, rush, rough shadow patterns in this guy. A little hand drill here.
about to do a hell of a lot more hand drills, jeez. There we go, it's starting to get a little bit better. Still really loose and gestural and stuff. I can always go in and more beautifully work out the shapes. Drawing hands, it definitely helps to understand uh, what the bones, uh, the basic structures of the bones that are going on underneath it. Maybe take uh, an opportunity to talk a little bit more about them on Friday, but I need to get kind of warmed up to them first. So that this is still a pretty nice gesture, actually. Probably work this out a little bit more, better. This is a burn Hogarth ball and socket structure right here for the fingers. Oop. Okay, Google. Okay, Google, stop. Good session and good closing number. Uh, this guy was probably about like a 10 12 minute pose i'd say so you can see you can see i really fudged the hand <laughs> so i need to do a lot of hand drills the point of doing hand drills is so that like you know if you encounter a hand you'll know what to do basically 
So like after having done those hand drills, I kind of think that like I'll ha I would have handled his hand something a little bit like uh, like this. At least as far as laying out the gesture goes. Eh. <laughs> that is a tricky hand pose at the angle that it's at, though, so... <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna blow a gasket if I try doing something like that right now. Some of these guys will move. All right, let's take a peek at chat. Mind your head proportions for sure. Uh, it, it helps to kind of count out the head if you establish it. Like measure with your thumb and forefinger. How many head how many heads stacked up is the is the space that the pose occupies. When you're doing quick sketch you can kind of you you can kind of eyeball that a little bit. Which is what I did. But like, uh, let's let's take a look. Like at this guy right here. He's about one, two, three, four, five. He's about like five and a half uh, heads on the face. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I got that's. I was pretty spot on actually with uh, with his uh, proportions on his uh, his head to the rest of the pose of his body. I would say. I think my I think I made his left calf a little short, and I think the angles of his legs are kind of off a bit. Uh, the angle of his thigh is off a bit. Like, uh, one of the mistakes I made is let's see, like this calf. Made, I know this uh this thigh needs to come up a little bit to about here and then this calf gets lengthened as a result i think the angle of the foot back here the back of the foot is somewhere around here so the thigh goes to about the calf goes about here front of the foot about here ish see how I did on the other side I think the I think this could probably be more like this. 
helix can be tucked in a bit more up here. The angles of the foot could be more like that. So there's some adjustments to his head area here. I definitely want to make. Shoulders come down just a little. Anyway, yeah. Correcting your correcting your own work is how you get better. So if you have the opportunity to this evening, you can watch the video of the day uh, on my twi on Twitch again to correct your poses. But I would invite people to do that to do some of that tonight. Do some drawovers and maybe adjust, maybe screenshot the poses and then do drawover studies to try to understand how they work a little bit better. However you do it. Um, I do strongly recommend getting as much practice as you can outside of these sessions. So with that in mind, we're going to cut the stream for the evening. Uh, uh, thank you all for coming. I'll let you guys go. Uh, I'll be hanging around again tomorrow in Discord, getting more practice in. Uh, if you want to try doing the turn the figure turnaround, uh, I would recommend keeping whatever uh, you're doing a turnaround of uh, very very simple and geometric, so you can track it easier. Maybe just start with some simple shapes, rotating in space before you do figure. But remember, you need the five pose in order to do a turnaround. You need to, you need to start with five poses that you will either that you will mirror and do in betweens on. The poses are front back. Three quarter front, three quarter rear, and profile. Um. Anyway, so hope you guys have a good evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, if you're coming along for my study session, well, but we'll also be Friday. We'll also be doing Twitch streaming classes on Friday and Saturday. See you guys. Bye bye.